We have long postulated that the Great Pyramids exhibit several more modern conservations now still draped upon them in various areas and in various states of erosion. These attempts, although now also ruins, are evidently much younger in age, their stark lacking of weathering, and the enormous exoskeleton of the original structure within now exposed in such areas as the West Wing. If one wanted to get a true snapshot of the actual astonishing age of these remarkable structures, one would think to dive into the deepest depths of its foundation, the subterranean chamber. The first thing noticed when venturing into these underground caverns, once carved into this enormous plateau built to hold these massive million-ton structures, is its unfinished appearance. How could this be? Why would the presumably earliest sector of the Great Pyramid itself appear to have been either finished hastily or abruptly abandoned? It is commonly argued within academic circles that this chamber was built prior to a quote, change of plan, with the upper layers later adapted into tombs. This hypothesis, as always, made within the parameters of currently understood paradigms and does not take into account the evidence we have been presenting for over 10 years. We, on the other hand, have a more compelling theory. Within this subterranean chamber are recorded attempts to dig out more of the foundation's floor, this undertaken in the 1800s by Cavigula, by another 30 feet. Additionally, on the southern side, there lay an ancient tunnel dug to a depth of 16 meters, yet leads to nowhere, also abandoned. With the previously mentioned evidence of later attempts to conserve these ruins, there has also been a litany of offenses against these priceless ruins over the ages, such as what we now feel is the subterranean chamber itself, not built with care and planning, but rather an incredibly ancient attempt to dig into and beneath these structures with what we now believe was possibly in an attempt to rob them as no funerary arrangements were ever incorporated into the build and the lack of care, along with the attempted tunnel, possibly a boring attempt made at the same time, along with Caligula, is also, we feel, more suggestive of our hypothesis. Khufu's sarcophagus, indeed the king's chamber itself, although the lid is missing from the casket, and indeed this in itself a mystery, the sarcophagus is noticeably too small. Who or what were these structures built for? We have the casing stones, white in nature, that, according to significant study, did indeed once drape the Great Pyramid itself, singing statues in Memnon. Where did these stones or indeed the capstone go? Why are there several different clear stages of construction upon the outer, less weighty stones, some of a polygonal nature? if these structures were not inhabited by several now-lost civilizations in succession. We hope you find our continued discoveries highly compelling. It is one thing to create a gargantuan pile of blocks, one painstakingly hammered from the sandstone bedrock, dragged into form with utilization of rolling stones and timber sleds, creating a structure reminiscent of a pyramid, using blocks that we would puzzle over for centuries. To build a million-ton structure, however, one with once hermetically sealed star shafts, tunnels, claimed tombs, and a grand gallery that was said to have been as smooth as glass, with an exoskeleton now discovered to have been made with stones many hundreds, often thousands of tons in weight, to have somehow perfectly placed these atop one another is something else entirely. To create this structure today would cost an unimaginable amount of money would take decades to plan, and would probably turn out at nowhere near the same levels of accuracy or weight of stones. How is one question. But we feel a more interesting question is why. They were not tombs, and there is unquestionably undiscovered knowledge hidden within these mysterious chambers. And the granite plugs are of no exception, a little-known puzzle which Egyptologists and historians alike have argued over their function and indeed purpose of being for years. Some believe the creators of the pyramid built them into the pyramid itself, and others, who believe they were later installed, possibly by another lost civilization who may have themselves once deciphered the mysteries of the pyramids. The most compelling theory are that these are in fact plugging hidden entrances, 
ones once entered and for some reason covered back up, could there be something of incredible importance hidden beyond these granite plugs? The Edgar brothers claim to have found an ancient form of plaster around one of the plug's edges, hinting at this indeed being the case. Extract from Petri, quote, The present top one is not the original end, it is roughly broken, and there is a bit of granite still cemented to the floor some way further south of it. The broken end of the upper block and a chip of granite still remaining cemented to the floor of the passage a little above that, showing that it was probably 24 inches longer than it is now. Thus, the total length of plug blocks would have been about 10 cubits. Extract from the Edgar Brothers, Volume 2, quote, The granite plug is composed of three blocks of red granite. There is a space of a few inches between the lowermost and middle blocks, Petri says 4 inches. The top end of the uppermost block is much fractured in appearance. Professor Petri says he saw a bit of granite still cemented to the floor two feet further up the passage. We, also, saw what for some time we took to be a piece of granite at the place indicated. But on more careful examination, it proved to be a lump of coarse red plaster. We saw several similar pieces of plaster adhering to the angles of the floor and walls throughout the length of the passage. We also saw at least one such piece of plaster in the Grand Gallery. We believe that the upper end of the granite plug is in its original state, and that its rough, unfinished appearance has symbolic significance. The upper end of the lowermost block also has a fractured appearance, which is certainly original, for the stone is very inaccessible and there is no room for anyone to work at it." End quote. What do you think are the purpose of the granite plugs? We will keep you posted. Arce, the American Research Center in Egypt. Arce's website states as follows. Among Arce's many great achievements is our relationship with the Supreme Council of Antiquities, the SCA, within the Egyptian Ministry of Culture, without whom our work would not be possible. Arce is viewed as making important contributions that serve to help Egypt directly in its pursuit of cultural heritage preservation. What this statement confesses to is the implication and more than likely collaboration with Egyptian authorities to cover up the real truth about ancient Egypt. In 1992, German robotics engineer Rudolf Gantenbrick was exploring shafts within the Queen's Chamber at the Great Pyramid, using a crawler robot he had designed himself. His intentions were to install an air conditioning system within the pyramid's existing design. While exploring these ancient tunnels, he discovered one of the shafts was blocked by a tiny limestone blocking door, a secret doorway only accessible with the use of robotic technology. Rudolf Gantenbrick, who was able to map, explore, and analyze the shafts for many years, believed a second door would have suggested the possibility that there would be yet another 40 centimeters further away. His hypothesis, based on the knowledge that many ancient Egyptian funerary monuments were equipped with a series of three blocking doors placed close to each other in succession before the entrance to a sacred tomb. In 2002, the National Geographic Society discovered this second door. Using their own robot known as Pyramid Rover, this event, closely supervised by Arce, who subsequently pulled the plug on the whole operation regarding the shafts. The team had a simple solution to Gantenbrick's problem. They sent the robot along the shaft, gripping the walls instead of the ceiling and floor. In this manner, it was somehow able to ride over the top of the obstacles. The rover's journey along the northern shaft revealed yet another door, just as Gantenbrick's claimed. Mysterious hieroglyphs, written on the floor of the hidden tunnels within Egypt's Great Pyramid, were shown to the world in an initial report on the robot's discoveries published within the Du Service des Antiquities. The images revealed features that had not been seen by human eyes since the construction of the monument. Researchers from around the world were particularly intrigued by three red ochre figures painted upon the tunnel's end deep inside the pyramid. Books such as Giza the Truth by Chris Harold and Ian Lawton, The Stargate Conspiracy by Lynn Picknett and Clive Prince, and Secret Chamber by Robert Balville have all, thanks to the tremendous and diligent research accomplished within, shed light upon the controversy surrounding the Giza Plateau and the Secret Chamber's existence.
The key question, the theme witnessed throughout these studies, was whether information has been withheld, discoveries undisclosed, and an understanding of the pyramids and sphinx existence purposefully kept hidden from the world. On the 22nd of March, 1993, Dr. Zawi Hawass was suspended from his position as chief inspector of the Giza Pyramid Plateau. It seems Gantenbrick took an opportunity, while the powers that be were distracted, to announce his findings to the world press in early April. It would appear, after substantial digging, that the string pullers within Egypt originate out of America and are stationed within Egypt in the form of Arsi. The truth regarding what is buried beneath these ancient structures may still remain a mystery, but realizing the obstacles obstructing an understanding of this truth is half the battle won. An enormous chunk is absent, not only from our own human history, but also from the history of our planet, the true extent of which, according to the considerable collection of Uparts gathered over the years, was filled with the flourish of vast technological developments by many civilizations. This, although somehow missing from academic teachings. The reasons for this absence are deep and far-reaching. Religious institutions, scientific theory, yet the unfortunate root of all these motivations, seemingly fueling this orchestrated ignorance, is money. Certain theories are attached to substantially profitable endeavors. Therefore, academia is very unlikely to budge, even when confronted with evidence to prove they are wrong. They simply profit from the continuation of a lie. One of our most compelling defenses for our accusation, and the evidence we feel most condemning of academia's ignorance to this obvious truth, is the highly complex, clearly advanced, seemingly impossible ruins found all over Earth, attributed by these said institutions to the most convenient recent ancestor. Not only do many of these structures still evade explanation today, but all of these so-called experts, undoubtedly handsomely paid to paint specific pictures of the past, fall silent in unison when asked to provide explanations to their claims. Not only how our modern ancestors built the palaces we share on our channel, but also why they never recorded such tasks, anywhere within any of their substantial writings, or indeed artistic, illustrative documentation of their lives. Indeed, found drenching the structures they claim as their own, yet, apparently, not able of building. One of the most amazing, recently realized examples is undoubtedly Coilap, a site we recently explored, and although the site has been known to the modern man for many centuries, it has taken aircraft photography and a keen observer to actually realize the truly astonishing task that Quelap actually was. Originally thought to be a walled fortress, an astonishing ruin from the ground alone, yet viewing the site from the sky shows that not only was an enormous natural plateau artificially walled off, but the entire back of the fortress was amazingly backfilled with earth. The city of Tsinsunsan, within modern-day Mexico, once had a population of between 25,000 and 30,000. However, when the Spanish arrived in the 1520s, the conquest virtually decimated the population of the city. This clear evidence of how easily civilizations come and go, yet academia remains deliberately oblivious of this fact. The extraordinarily circular structures found within the city, claimed to be pyramids, have merely been ignored and assumed to have been the work of these once decimated modern inhabitants, completely ignoring not only the astonishingly precise stonework, but also the fact that just like Quelap, the site contains astonishing earthworking, created with unbelievable precision, and like Quelap, containing circular structures. Was this site once built by the same people? An incredible site, one which demands astute, and honest research. As with many of the other controversial ancient sites which can be found all over the world, the Pyramid of Gaimar on the island of Tenerife was initially scoffed at by archaeologists and academic authorities alike. When a local newspaper published an article 
Claiming to have discovered an actual ancient steppe pyramid upon the island, it was quickly dismissed as ludicrous and said to have been based upon no physical evidential logic whatsoever, with funded institutes arguing that the claims had been made mistakenly upon agricultural stone terraces commonly found throughout the Canaries. However, thanks to Norwegian ethnographer Thor Heyerdahl, who upon investigating the site himself, now knows for a certainty that not only one pyramid does indeed exist on the island, but there is, in fact, six of them. Thor, who had extensively researched the pyramids of Tukumi, a site we recently covered within Peru, was initially intrigued by the photographs of the site, and upon visiting the valley, concluded that these structures were neither terraces nor random piles of stones cleared by the Spaniards, as some have tried to explain them away as. He attested that they were, in fact, painstakingly built steppe pyramids, constructed according to similar principles to those found within the ancient pyramids of Mexico, Peru, and ancient Mesopotamia. In 1991, research by Juan Antonio Belmonte Avalis, Antonio Aparicio Juan, and Cesar Esteban Lopez, researchers of the Canary Institute of Astrophysics, show that the long sides of some of the terrace structures at Gaimar align with the direction of both solstices. The main limiting wall points to the sunset in the summer solstice, and the pyramids have stairs on their western side which face the direction of the rising sun on the winter solstice. Although the structures have been dated to within the last few centuries, the question remains unanswered. Just who built them? Or indeed, why they built them? remains a complete mystery. Furthermore, if they are indeed recent constructions, why do they share similarities with extremely ancient pyramidal structures found elsewhere on our planet? Undoubtedly an incredible site, one which receives very little attention, yet is clearly of historical importance. Such ignorance towards said sites is always highly compelling. <laughs>